So let's continue with our greedy algorithms playlist. Before that, hey, we all come back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is n meetings in one room. So what is the problem stating? It's stating that you'll be given a single meeting room, which means you can perform one meeting at a time. And you'll be given n meetings start and end time. Let's understand. If I have a meeting room and I follow the order given, if I follow the order given, I'll, I'll be performing the first meeting because initially the meeting room is empty. So I'll be performing the first meeting which is starting at the time 0 and ending at the time 5. Perfect. I go to the next meeting. Can I perform this meeting? I cannot because it is starting at the time 3 and the meeting room is occupied. It is occupied. I cannot perform. Can I perform 1, 2? I cannot. Can I perform 5, 9? No, I cannot. Why? Because... It is occupied till 5, after 5, after 5. So I cannot. Can I perform 5, 7? No, I cannot. Can I perform 8, 9? Yes, I can. If I follow the given order, the number of meetings I can perform is 2. Got it? But the question is different. You can follow any order, any order of your choice. And the task is to maximize the number of meetings that you can perform Using one single meeting room. Let's understand. What if I start with this one? 1, 2, which is the third meeting. If I start with this, perfectly fine. After that, I'm saying I'll be performing 3, 4, which is the second meeting. Can I perform? I can because the meeting room was empty after 2. Can I perform 0, 5? No, I cannot because... It needs uh, 0 to 5 to be empty and it is not, it is not. So you're getting a wise, why to perform longer meetings? Why to perform longer meetings? So I'll not be performing this. I'll, I'll ask you a very simple question. This one or these two? Not this one, these two. So what I'll do is I'll perform 5,7 which is the fifth meeting. I'll perform... 8, 9 after that, which is the 6th meeting. And this will be crossed out. So if I follow this order, which is the 3rd meeting, then the 2nd, then the 5th, and then the, oh my bad, and then the 6th. If I follow this, the total number of meetings will be 4. And this is the maximum possible. You can try out all possible configurations, and this is what you'll get. So in a problem, like in an interview, they might ask you to return this. Or they might ask you to return 3, 2, 5, 6. Can be either of it. Right? They might ask you to return the order as well. How do I solve this problem? I think you got a hint. You got a hint. I'll be greedy. Yes, I'll be greedy. What I will do is, I'll try to take the faster meetings. What do I mean by faster meetings? Which means, the ending time. Right? So look, what did we do? We took this one, the meeting which was ending faster, which was ending faster, so that I can allocate the next meeting. So my intuition will be greedy. I'll try to take the meetings that are ending faster, that are ending faster. Can I do that? I think I can do that. I can do that. So what does that mean? I will start with the meeting that ends, my bad. I'll start with this one because it is ending faster. And after that, I'll go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. So I'll be greedy. So what I'll do is, I'll take the start time, I'll take the end time, and I'll try to sort it using the end time. Got it? Okay, so what I can do is, I can assign, like I can take a data structure, I can keep the start, I can keep the end, and I can keep the position as well. Why do I need the position? Because at the end, I'll have to return the order as well, order of the meetings, in case the interviewer is asking for it. So what I'll do is... Um, I'll sort it according to the ending time. So the first one will be 1, 2 and the meeting number is 3. Perfect. The second one will be 3, 4, 2. The third one will be 0, 5. Uh, if I'm not wrong, yes. 0, 5 and meeting number is 1. Again, I'm writing the position in terms of 1 based indexing. After that, it will be either 5, 9. Uh, sorry, uh, 5, 7 rather. 5 comma 7 comma 5 after that it will be 5 comma 
9, comma, tears at the fourth position. Yes. After that, it will be 8, comma, 9, comma, 6. Perfect. I've written down all the meetings. So initially, when you start off, the meeting room is empty. So one thing you know for sure is the first meeting can be performed. You know that thing for sure. So what you can say is, okay, initially I can perform one meeting, right? And the meeting, the meeting, can I say uh, last time or something like this? Or maybe I can call it as free time. Free, maybe something like, yeah, maybe like free time. When does it get free? The free time, can I say, will be when it ends up. So the free time is two. So I can perform one meeting and the meeting room re, uh, the meeting room will be empty at time two. Perfect. So where can I start iterating from? I can start iterating from this one. But please make sure you carry a data structure which will be storing the order as well. So what is the order? Uh, third position, correct? So you can just pick up the third and you can store it. Or maybe you can take, maybe we'll have a better data structure. Something like this. First, I'm performing the third one, right? Okay, let's see. Can I perform this? This is the start time. And this is greater than the freeing time. So I can perform this. I can. So if I perform this one, count will be two. I can perform the second meeting from the position. And when does it end? At time four. Perfect. Let's go to the next one. 0, 0,5. Can I perform this? It's starting at time 0. But the meeting room will be free at time this. So I cannot perform this. I cannot. I'll go to the next one. 5,7. Can I? I can because 5 is when it starts. And the free time is 4. So I can perform this. If I can perform this, I can store down the position. I can store down the position. And I can say the count is 3. And the free up time is 7. Let's go to the next one. Can I perform this one? 5,9. It's starting at 5. And the meeting room gets free up at 7. So I cannot. I'll go to the next one. 8,9. Can I? 8, 8. Yes, I can. The count will be 4. The position will be 6. And the freeing up time will be 9. And the iteration is over. And the iteration is over. So eventually, uh, from the count, You'll get the count and if you follow this particular data structure, you'll get the order as well. So you'll be writing down the pseudo code in case you want your language specific code, you can find that below. So what I'll be writing is a function, correct? And the function will be taking a start time and an end time and maybe an n. If n is not given, you can compute n by saying start dot size. What do I need? I need a data object which is going to store the start, the end, and the position for sure. So maybe I can create a data object like this, right? Again, in C++, it can be a struct, it can be a class, in Java, it can be a class. We'll have three variables, start, end, and position. Perfect. What I can do is, I can say, okay, data, and I can call it as array of size n. So what I've done is, I've created an array, which is storing this data object for n number of times. After this, I'll be iterating from 0 till n. And what I will be doing is, I'll be saying, array of i, start value will be, start of i, array of i, the end value will be, end of i, array of i, dot position will be, I'm storing one base, so i plus one, done. Once you're done with this, you'll have to sort it. You'll have to sort it. So can I say, sort array, comma, whatever it is, you'll have to write a comparator so that it is sorted on the basis of comparator. And this comparator will be sorting it on the basis of the end time. Again, uh, in case you want to know how to write a comparator, go back and watch my C++ STL video. I've described it in depth on the basis of uh, end day. Perfect. What after this? I need to start iterating. I know one thing, I need to count. So maybe I can keep a count initially as one because first meeting can definitely be assigned. Can I say the limit or the free time? We were calling it free time. Free time will be 
array of zero dot end first meeting ends and maybe I can take a data structure and initially the data structure will be having a array of zero dot position this is what the data structure will be having initially it can be an array it can be anything according to your choice after this what we start iterating and we iterate from i equal to 1 till n minus 1 and what I check is if this meeting can be performed I know one thing if array of i if the start time if the start time is greater not equal to greater than the free time if that is the case I know this can be performed and if this can be performed I can say count plus one perfect free time will be updated this is when the meeting now gets free which is when this ends up after that I can say data structure can you add up the position of this which is array of i dot position perfect if it's done done and dusted and at the end of the day depending on the question if they are asking you the count you can return the count or you can return the data structure which is storing the order in which the meetings are performed. So before I move on to the time complexity, let us discuss how to write the comparator. So what I'll do is I'll write the comparator. Again, uh, very simple. Boolean comparator. You have the data. It'll be given a value 1. You have a data. It'll be having a value 2. You know one thing. If the end time, which means value 1 dot end, is lesser than value 2 dot n. You can write lesser than equal to, doesn't matter. If that is the case, you can return true. Apart from this, you can return false for all of the other cases. Doesn't matter. Don't overcomplicate this. Don't overcomplicate this. Keep the comparator very simple. Perfect. Done and dusted. What is the time complexity? Okay, first to assign, I'm taking b go of n. Okay. Then to sort, I'm taking n log of n. Okay. I'm again going b go of n. Perfect. So there's a b go of 2n. If I have to write, it's a b go of 2n plus n log n. That is the overall time complexity. And what is the space complexity? I'm using an extra array, right? Which is storing three variables, 3 into n. Correct? Along with this, in case the question is asking for the order, you're also using a data structure to store the order. So depending on the question, this will be varying. So this will be the time complexity and the space complexity for this particular problem. So if you're still now watching and if you've understood everything, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken, don't ever forget your golden.